Tony LaFountain and Jim Costello is also here from the town. They're going to um, do a series of presentations over the next four months. So the last Tuesday of the month, we will have a guest visit from Mr. LaFountain. He may have a guest with him, as he does today. But he'll be putting together, um, I guess, specific um, lectures on areas in the town. Right. So thank you very much for coming. Okay. How this all came about is uh, I had Pam and Dick Friedis, uh, who's here in the front, uh, and I like to keep Dick in the front uh, row so I can keep an eye on him. Uh, but uh, what happened is they came to my office and said, uh, have you thought about doing a program about uh, different things going on in Penfield? And I said, I, I'm always uh, very happy to do that uh, because we've got a wonderful community and I always enjoy talking about uh, what's going on within the community. And so they said, okay, we're going to sign you up for a three-parter. Uh, part one, uh, we want you to just to kind of give an overview of what's going on in and around the town. So what I'm going to be doing over the next uh, couple of sessions is soliciting ideas and thoughts. A little more of this, a little less of that. Uh, could you touch on, on this particular topic or this particular area? Because we want to make it as uh, meaningful as possible. And as Pam said, uh, I have Jim Costello with me, and uh, Jim, is, uh, Jim and I go way back. Uh, Jim and I actually worked together in the town before I went off to, uh, to work at Kodak for 30 years. Jim stayed and held down the fort at the town, and uh, he's our business development uh, director. So it's really it's his um, in, intent or in his charge uh, specifically to look for bringing the right types of businesses into the community, attracting them, retaining them, uh, and making sure that they're a right uh, fit for uh, the community overall. So today we're going to hit a, a myriad of uh, different uh, topics. Uh, so it's a real potpourri of uh, different things that uh, happen in the town. Uh, it either has happened, or is in the process of happening today, or we've got some things uh, going on in the future. Uh, with that, let's uh, take a look at uh, some of the things we're going to talk about. Maybe honoring our past, uh, Daniel Penfield, Mary Penfield, that uh, came to this area uh, to settle this great uh, community of Penfield. Celebrating our present, uh, planning for our future, and that's a big key. Some of the things that Jim Costello and the team that we have back, uh, because we want to make sure we're doing the right things uh, for future generations. Um, I want to talk about uh, what it is that uh, you might want to know, uh, and that'll help me build for the next couple of sessions. And then uh, I want to talk about what our focus, uh, our commitment uh, as uh, the town board, myself as a supervisor, and our, our uh, complete staff, what we're trying to accomplish uh, for uh, and what our focus is for 2013. So, so of course, uh, things uh, started with uh, Daniel Penfield uh, coming to this area. Uh, Penfield was incorporated in 1810. We celebrated our bicentennial just a couple of years ago, and I, that was my first year in office, so I had the, the honor and privilege of serving as a supervisor for the bicentennial, uh, but a lot of hard work went into that uh, to get us uh, to that bicentennial, and uh, a lot of hard work, uh, uh, and I'm going to probably miss a couple of people, but I see Sabrina Renner in the back, uh, Phyllis Ely, Linda Cole from our town board uh, really was our point person that uh, helped pull all that together. And, uh, and a number of members of not only our staff, uh, but also the residents of Penfield to make the, the bicentennial uh, a special event. As, as I take a look at Penfield, and, and as I've said uh, over the years, um, I, I, and I thought that uh, the mill wheel was a really great way uh, to kind of define what Penfield's all about. Uh, uh, Penfield has a very rich agricultural heritage. Uh, when uh, the early uh, settlers uh, came to this area, farming was a big component of that. But uh, a lot of other things that uh, you might not know about is, is that uh, salt road uh, for the salt uh, mines uh, that, uh, that were there, and uh, they would take that, uh, take that salt and uh, they would use that for preserving food. We had a lot of hardwoods in Penfield, and so uh, uh, charcoal uh, was a, a, big, uh, a big product that uh, we manufactured uh, here in the town. And back in those days, certainly they would uh, barter for a lot of things. Uh, they might get uh, fresh fruits uh, and vegetables in return for salt, uh, in return for charcoal and hardwood and things like that. But really the foundation um, it was, was about the families of Penfield, uh, that farm community, uh, the neighborhoods as they started to develop, uh, the volunteerism uh, that was so strong then and has uh, gotten even stronger today, and then our schools as they started to develop. And as Penfield uh, started to, to grow, 
uh, it has introduced our business community, uh, our youth groups, our, our certainly our faith uh, community, uh, a big uh, part of our foundation, our veterans uh, groups, and uh, our senior living. And as we round out uh, this wheel uh, overall, we've got uh, some, some great support with a number of uh, group homes around our community, our arts community, uh, PSO, and a very strong art, uh, art community, uh, our sports organizations, and uh, our library. But each one of them really linked together, and that's uh, what helps make Penfield uh, so strong. And uh, to me, that's what makes it such a community-friendly uh, and family-friendly community. Um, and uh, I think all of us should be very proud of that. A lot of hard work over the last 200 plus years, and uh, that continues to grow and that continues to expand. So we finally got uh, Daniel Penfield in his resting place. It took us a while. It took us about uh, almost two years uh, after the bicentennial. Part of that was, uh, if you recall, Shuffleburger Park uh, that had some contaminated soil there. And we had to get uh, that cleaned up before we could, uh, because we didn't want to put uh, Daniel down and have to move him two or three times. So we got that uh, area cleaned up. He's in his final resting place. Uh, the artist, uh, Don Saltiel, um, has been up a number of times and we've got a little tweaking that uh, that he wants us uh, to do um, and uh, we'll be doing that uh, this uh, spring but uh, we've had a lot of uh, compliments about uh, Daniel being there and being part of the Four Corners. So um, let's, uh, let's celebrate our present and talk about uh, some of the good things that are going on in the community that uh, you may or may not be aware of and if uh, as we go along if, uh, if you'd like a little bit more information on something you have a question Let's make this very interactive. Raise your hand, uh, throw something at me, uh, yell out, uh, whatever you'd like to do. So uh, we're doing a, a new uh, uh, PenRec uh, website. We kicked that off on the first of the year. And uh, there's so many good things that are going on uh, within Penfield Recreation uh, under the leadership of Chris Bilo and his team. They're really working to uh, help uh, focus and uh, add more programs and uh, interject a lot more energy and wellness into the community. And that's one of the things that we've been talking about is uh, Penfield being a wellness community. You hear about uh, Parrington being Trail Town USA. Uh, you hear about Webster being Sports Town USA. One of the things that we thought that uh, we brought to the table from a Penfield standpoint is wellness and wellness uh, in, in many different forms. Uh, we've got a great trail system, we've got great recreation programs, uh, we've got uh, plenty of parks. All of our programs that we offer uh, really concentrate on this wellness, uh, whether it be healthy cooking, uh, healthy programs uh, for our, our youth, all the way up uh, through, our senior, uh, through our senior citizens. One of the other things that, uh, that I thought uh, we needed to do and uh, bring our resources together was to do some con consolidation within our sewer parks, uh, facilities, and highway. And uh, so we really pulled all that together. Uh, uh, it was in uh, about the April timeframe of uh, 2012. And uh, I'm happy to report that as a result of that, elimination of duplication of effort, uh, equipment, uh, centralizing our personnel. We closed out the year in Public Works uh, $500,000 under budget. Um, and to me, uh, we got everything done. We said we were going to get done and uh, we were able to save uh, dollars and cents uh, for the taxpayer. And that really is the key. Since I've been in office, no one has come into my, into my office to say, please raise my taxes. Uh, I'd like to see my taxes go up. If anything, I have folks say, at the very least, you need to keep taxes stable, but ideally, um, you really need to lower our taxes. So that, uh, that is something that's important to all of us. We're looking to do uh, two mixed-use districts, and we've uh, just kicked that off last week, and uh, we've got our consultant coming in. And one of the things that we've talked about is, is that, uh, and, and, and so if anyone's here from uh, uh, different uh, communities like Henrietta or Greece, uh, I think they're wonderful communities. Uh, however, saying that, uh, uh, I, th I think our residents did not want to see Penfield turn into an, a West Henrietta Road or turn into a Ridge Road in Greece. They really wanted to have a number of businesses that were more locally focused, more for the community and uh, part of the community and, and not big boxes on every single corner. And so one of the things that uh, our town board recognized is, is that we don't want to balance all of the taxes on the residents back. Uh, you have to have a certain amount of commercial and to balance that out. And so 
as we look at these mixed-use districts, uh, it's looking to encourage uh, more uh, community-based businesses, uh, those businesses that really take care of Penfield, and uh, some of those communities that are just touching us. Uh, typically, someone that uh, lives in Spencerport is not going to come over to visit this particular business in Penfield. Uh, but again, we wanted to try to uh, bring in some additional dollars uh, to help our tax base. So the two tax, uh, so the two mixed-use districts, we're looking at uh, the 250 area and Atlantic Avenue, and we're also uh, looking at uh, the Manitou Lake, um, and uh, that's down in the Panorama area. A lot of people don't realize what's back there. It used to be the old Dolomite Program uh, sand plant uh, back there. And uh, there's a beautiful 103-acre lake uh, that's there. And a lot of people don't realize that. Uh, uh, but that's a wonderful asset. And what we're attempting to do is uh, to bring that into development that, uh, that helps uh, our tax base and done very tastefully with a combination of some businesses and some residential as we take a look at it. One of the projects that, uh, that we worked on last year was we really opened up uh, that, that whole drainage area behind, behind the Four Corners area. So you've got the, the daycare facility, uh, Itacata uh, Mexican restaurant, which used to be Los Amigos, and uh, back uh, through there, uh, we had a lot of different uh, drainage pipes, open ditch, uh, mosquito uh, ponds, uh, just a, a real mess back there and uh, in order to make all that work we went back and cleaned all of that up and uh, ideally uh, help connect all of those businesses on that uh, southeast quadrant and uh, so that was a big project that our that our crews did. Uh, we have actually started the left hand turn arrows on the uh, in the four corners that's something that uh, Don Mack, for those that may have remembered Don Mack, uh, God rest his soul. I came into office as a town board member with Don Mack um, in uh, 1986 uh, is when I came on board with Don Mack. And uh, for 23 years, um, we have been attempting to try to get a turn uh, arrows there. And so through a lot of hard work, we finally got the state uh, to go along with that. The good news is, is we've got two poles in. The bad news is the other two poles uh, I can't quite see them from here, so uh, we're, we're continuing to work with them, and uh, the goal is, is that here in 2013, when you come to the Four Corners, you'll be able to take a left-hand turn if you're coming off in Five Mile Line Road, either southbound or northbound, and I think that'll be a very, a very big plus uh, overall. So I think you need to back up just a little. He got uh, my... my uh, my finger man here he got uh, got a little excited. So, did she turn your finger? Let me uh, let me talk about a couple of uh, residential projects that are going on. Uh, some you see, some are very visible, some are kind of tucked uh, back in. Uh, the first one is Abington Place. Uh, that's on Nine Mile Point Road, almost at the Penfield Webster border, uh, right on the west uh, the west side, and it's uh, 99 lots. Uh, the first phase is underway. They're looking to get the second and third phase. Uh, approved over the next uh, month or two. And uh, there are uh, patio homes. Uh, there's a lot of, we've, we've heard there's a lot of residents that want to get out of their larger homes. They want to get into something smaller. More importantly, they want to get into everything on one floor. Uh, so this is um, uh, some patio homes. Arbor Ridge, uh, a townhouse uh, development uh, on Fellows Road right off in Route 441. Uh, they have uh, completed uh, uh, most everything there. They've really have uh, sold out, uh, and again, uh, what folks uh, like about that is, is again, everything on one floor, they've got some handicap accessibility components built in, uh, the homes uh, to a certain degree are some green home design, uh, which uh, help uh, with the, the overall gas and electric bills and things like that. Ashland Rise, uh, just across the street from Arbor Ridge, uh, that, uh, that will be underway. Uh, probably within the next month the model home will go up and then you'll start to see that uh, develop uh, there and that'll tie in with the homes uh, behind that. Uh, Cambridge, Cambridge Estates, uh, that's across uh, the street uh, from Nelton's Funeral Home. It's those townhouses that uh, were built there. And um, I spoke with the developer of that uh, project and uh, he said he no sooner finished the building and uh, people moved in and he had a waiting list. Uh, so there was a real need for that type, uh, type of housing, one and two bedroom uh, houses. Uh, the nice opportunity is, is that you rent 
uh, not own. They had garages, so you could pull into your garage, close your garage door, get out of your car and into your home and feel the security of, uh, the security of that. Why yes, sir. Why is it a better idea to have a rent it than own? Well, well, in, in, in some cases, that, that's right, uh, but there's a lot of residents that uh, really like that. Uh, uh, they write one check, and uh, if they want to pick up and uh, leave, they can do that, and they don't have to worry about selling their house. So there is a, a lot of residents that we're seeing that want to rent and not own. They don't want that responsibility. They just uh, write the one check. Uh, that covers their rent, that covers their garbage, it covers their cable TV. And uh, so we've seen a real, and it's kind of interesting, uh, when, we were, when we were speaking with the developer of Arbor Ridge, um, he's got a project in Henrietta, and uh, he started out with the idea he was going to sell them. He had so much request to rent them uh, that uh, he, now, he now rents them, and uh, he said uh, he gets some turn, uh, but it's what that uh, particular focus of the market uh, wanted. Normally, you and I would think that uh, we own the home, we got equity built into the home, uh, but uh, there's a different slice of that population that are willing to pay. Um, and in this case, you're looking at $1,600 to $1,800 a month. Um, so they're not what I would call inexpensive, um, and uh, they want that ability that if I want to stay there for a year and then move to Florida or move to where my kids are, uh, or move into uh, assisted living, uh, I can do that. Uh, Camden Park, up off in State Road, uh, this is near completion. And, and so I just want to pause to say that over the last three years, Penfield has been uh, in the top three as far as hottest growing communities. And uh, I think it was in 2011, we were number one. Uh, but over the last uh, three years, we have been within the top three. Um, and what I hear on a regular basis is I want, uh, I want to come here uh, because I, I like the amenities that Penfields offers. I like the school district. I like the fact that it uh, really does feel like a very family-friendly uh, community. And uh, so we, we have just been the benefactor of uh, that. And, and if you think about it, Penfield, uh, it, the town hall itself is in the geographic center of the town. So when I'm sitting in my office, I'm sitting in the Webster School District. So even though it's the geographic center of the community, uh, Webster School District plays a big uh, part and a big component. And that has some advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the advantage is, is it gives our residents yet another opportunity, whether I'm in the Penfield or the Webster School District. The disadvantage is, is that uh, some of our residents on the northern end of town uh, really haven't figured out if they're in Penfield or Webster. Uh, because what happens is they're either in West Webster or Webster Fire District. Uh, they're in the Webster School District. Uh, they have a Webster address, 14580. And uh, when they come to the town to pay their town taxes, uh, they're, they're a bit confused saying, uh, I do everything in Webster except for pay my town taxes. Uh, and I come to, come to the town of Penfield. So um, there is some uh, pluses and minuses uh, uh, with that. But uh, again, we do have families that specifically come to Penfield uh, for the community and then for the Webster School District and some for the community and the Penfield School District. Um, Carolyn Court off in Creek Street, that's currently under, uh, under uh, construction uh, right now, so you'll see that uh, if you're uh, along Creek Street. Yes, sir. Sorry, that, yep. the, Caroline Court, uh, if I remember years ago, if you keep going west uh, in the back of Caroline Court, you go down and there's Tuffa Glen down there. That is correct. That could, that's a scenic uh, place also. Is there any way or, or idea of how to extend paths or, or something to see that? I know, I know our trails committee uh, have been looking at, uh, and they've been working with our uh, planning boards so that as these different uh, projects come in, they look to get access easements so that uh, they can continue to grow and expand. But you're absolutely right. If you take a look through that area, uh, if you go from Empire Boulevard and you go in where the Agway and uh, the antique shop is, uh, back there, there's Wilbur Track Road. And back in there, we've got so many different areas that are so beautiful for, uh, for hiking. And uh, our trails committee continues to look for ways to try to grow and expand that. They're currently looking at a, a program, not to get too far off topic, but they're looking at a program of connecting the trail from Panorama Plaza and uh, getting that all the way out to the, uh, to the bay so that everything is connected through there. 
they've been working on getting easements, they've been working on getting access uh, to different areas, and uh, that's part of their, and, and I have to say that the Trails Committee over the last couple of years has really kicked it up a notch. Uh, they have really done uh, a lot. Uh, they've, got a, they've got a very nice cross-section of people. Uh, Terry Smith and uh, Nels Carmen uh, are the two uh, co-leaders of that uh, and work very well together and uh, they just continue to grow that. But our planning board is uh, working very closely with developers and residents to try to get access uh, through there as well. But th the concern in that area certainly is some of the steep slopes and some of the erodible slopes uh, that are in that, uh, in that area as well. Uh, Timber Glen. Uh, Timber Glen is on the corner of uh, Whalen Road and 250. The, again, some townhomes. That started up. They had a couple of developments or a couple of units that were developed there. And then all of a sudden it just stopped. Uh, it didn't go anywhere for the longest period of time. And then just recently it's uh, uh, taken hold and uh, they've got a number of new starts uh, in that area. And then Wyndham Woods, probably one of the more visible ones right on the corner of Five Mile Line and uh, Plank Roads. Uh, the, the first couple of uh, phases are underway and uh, they're uh, actually working on the phase three uh, and you'll see a little bit more activity in that area. The Four Corners um, uh, has seen an ongoing refurbishing uh, and uh, filling of vacancies and I'd like to recognize uh, Jim Costello. As I mentioned, D Jim is the business development uh, manager and uh, so he really looks to work with folks. And if you think about it, it's just a lot of the little things that uh, tend to trip us up. How do you fit the parking together? Uh, how can you coexist in those areas? How can you have your garbage uh, properly collected so you don't have all of these dumps, dumpsters? Can you have a central location? How do you screen it? Uh, how do you get uh, people uh, with overflow parking and things like that? So we've done a lot uh, down in that area. We'll, talk, we'll touch on that uh, a little bit more as we get in, uh, but a lot, of, a lot of things have started to fill in. A lot of new restaurants, that whole area is really, uh, you can probably go for two weeks and uh, hit a different place, uh, either for lunch or dinner. Uh, and uh, all of them seem to be doing very well. Last year we did two rezoning projects, uh, one right across the street from Wegmans, uh, the road going into Harris Whalen Park. Uh, so there is about uh, eight or nine parcels there that were uh, rezoned. And again, it was, it's for non-retail, it's more office, uh, intended for office. Uh, to serve the residents of the town. And then on uh, uh, Fairport Nine Mile Point Road, and that would be opposite uh, Target, uh, the entrance to Target off in Route 250. And uh, again, uh, as we get into this, uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, some pro uh, projects that are going on over there. And, and as I said, the restaurants uh, all doing very well. I've had an opportunity uh, in my family to uh, sample uh, most of them, and um, I haven't had a bad meal yet. And uh, so it's been very good, and uh, they're all doing a very good job. Angus uh, House and uh, Lounge, uh, this is the former Embry Drugstore. Uh, when I first came to Penfield in 75, uh, this is where uh, we would go. Uh, to get all those little things that uh, you might get at uh, Rite Aid or CVS or Walgreens. Uh, all your prescriptions were filled. It had the old uh, soda fountain, which reminded me a lot of the Adirondacks where I grew up up in Saranac Lake, Lake Placid area. And uh, that was kind of a focal point uh, for the Four Corners. They went in and spent a lot of money to, to rehab outside and went through the Historic Preservation Board and did a lot of work inside and it, it is really a very nice uh, experience. I worked, uh, or actually uh, was down with the uh, planning board. They held a late Christmas gathering because of uh, everybody's schedule and uh, we were down there a couple of Thursdays ago and uh, they did, uh, did a wonderful, uh, wonderful job. This is the, uh, the Humphrey House, uh, what everybody knew as the Humphrey House. Uh, it was open, it was closed. It was open for a short time and closed again. And, and now this uh, couple uh, have uh, come in. Uh, they had a lot of restaurant experience at Woodcliffe and uh, they've gone in and remodeled uh, that area uh, and have uh, done a wonderful job to bring it back to the Humphrey House, but with a flair and uh, to leave their own mark. And uh, they're doing a, a very good job uh, in that area. T-Bones, uh, the T-Bones, uh, for those of you that, uh, that was the Embry household or uh, home originally, uh, and then um, that went from that to the Liberty Hollow. Uh, Lynn Embry, one of the sons, uh, and, and Rex uh, ran that uh, for a period of time. And that turned over to a, to a number of different restaurants and now uh, has settled in with uh, T-Bones uh, Steakhouse. And uh, it is a great, uh, great place to go. 
All of these places uh, serve lunch as well. A lot of times when you think of a steakhouse, you think of uh, going to dinner and not to lunch, but uh, all of these places uh, do serve uh, uh, lunch as well. Uh, Itacada, a Mexican restaurant, uh, used to be the Los Amigos. Uh, this gentleman uh, has a Mexican restaurant on the west side. Uh, everyone raved about it. Uh, he has uh, come into Penfield, has done a tremendous job, and uh, I have to tell you, I've seen more uh, vehicles over the last uh, month, month and a half since they've been open than I had in the previous uh, two years total. Uh, so uh, they're doing a very good job. And I, and I think, uh, you know, he's really trying to run it right uh, and make it a family experience. Uh, the parking in the back has been opened up, uh, so I think it's been a win-win uh, for, uh, for that area. The other Mexican restaurant, uh, this is the former Duchess, uh, and uh, they're doing uh, very well. Uh, uh, every time I go by, it seems like they've got a, a waiting line uh, out back, and uh, they do, uh, do an excellent job. And then right next to them, and, I, and we may have it, ah, yes, uh, Menchie's, so frozen yogurt. For those of you that are interested in frozen yogurt, uh, that's gonna be open soon. And, I, and I'll take a short, uh, just a very short story. I took uh, my two granddaughters, I got roped into, uh, or maybe set up is the better way, uh, from my daughter that said, uh, take the girls over to the uh, yogurt place. They love yogurt, uh, you'll have a great time. So I took them over and uh, never, been, never been into it uh, before. And uh, they hit the door, they knew exactly what to do. Uh, they cranked every dial, which there were about 50 of them for different toppings. And when they put the two on the scales, uh, the young lady behind the counter, who was very nice, smiled and said, that'll be $11. <laughs> and I said, for, uh, for two dishes of ice cream? And she said, that'll be $11, sir. And uh, enjoy your ice cream. So. Um, I, I went back and said to my said to my oldest daughter, I think I got set up on that one. So, but uh, the girls were happy. I guess that's uh, the important part. And my wife reminds me, the grandparents are supposed to spoil grand grandchildren. So, um, Cam's Pizzeria, right here, was the the former uh, Sunoco station station that was there for uh, so long. Chris Holshu, who's now down in the Four Corners, and uh, there was a lot of contaminated soil. The owner. Uh, Mr. DePrima came in and cleaned that up and uh, built the Camp's Pizzeria and uh, they seem to be doing very, very well. Something about, uh, you know, and I said to a good friend of mine uh, who's in the bakery business who says flour and water equals cash. Uh, and uh, I said to myself, I think I got in the wrong business because uh, flour and water, it just seems that uh, you add another pizza place and uh, they're as, uh, as loaded as all the rest of them uh, by way of customers. So it's, they've got the right combination. The Empire Bar and Grill, so a lot of times uh, when we get to Empire Boulevard, we forget that that's Penfield and everybody thinks that's Webster. Um, Jackie, uh, who is the manager of the Wegman store, uh, will call me every once in a while and say, hi, this is Jackie from, uh, from Wegman's Webster. And I said, hi, Jackie, uh, you, you're actually in Penfield. And she said, yeah, I keep forgetting that. Uh, so Empire Boulevard, a lot of times, uh, everybody, and, and I kid with Ron Nesbitt. Ron Nesbitt will say to me, uh, when things are going so well on Empire Boulevard, he says, you know, I stand up and, and claim what Empire Boulevard. But whenever somebody complains about uh, Empire Boulevard, he says, I always give them your phone number. So we have this, we have this little combination back and forth. But they're uh, doing very well. In fact, they're doing so well uh, that I think uh, I've recently heard that they're looking at uh, other locations because their, their business has, uh, has taken off so well. George's Restaurant, I know a lot of, uh, a lot of people felt bad when the Duchess uh, closed uh, and uh, a lot of the staff and uh, folks that ran the Duchess, um, uh, they changed the name and they went down to uh, right at the end of Panorama Plaza and uh, opened up George's restaurant. So if you close your eyes uh, from the Dutch's and open your eyes in George's, you see a lot of the same faces and a lot of the same menu, and uh, they do a very nice job as, uh, as well. Cornerstone Family Restaurant, we were very concerned when Perkins, uh, all of a sudden they were open one day and closed the next, and, uh, and uh, that really had that one-two punch with the Dutch's leaving and uh, Perkins leaving. And uh, through a lot of work uh, by Jim, uh, we got uh, family in uh, Cornerstone uh, Family Restaurant. Uh, they seem to be doing very well. I went there for the first time uh, the end of last week, and um, they seem to they seem to be uh, getting it pretty right, and it was uh, pretty busy uh, through that area. 
Uh, uh, we've got uh, Mathanasium uh, that uh, is down in the four corners right behind uh, Dunkin' Donuts. This is a real nice little niche. Uh, this person uh, spent a lot of uh, her career in uh, Xerox and uh, opened up this uh, to help uh, our kids and to make them uh, more proficient, uh, proficient in math. And uh, so she's carved off a, a very nice little uh, niche market there and they seem to be uh, growing and expanding and uh, good for them and, and good for our students to have yet another outlet uh, to be able to go and to, to learn. Um, and uh, she's got uh, some groups that uh, she works with. She works with individuals, so it's uh, it's really it's really helping, and, it, and it's another another uh, uh, support uh, back to our schools. Uh, the Broody property, and you've seen a lot of work down there with the Broody property. So if we take a step back, uh, back uh, here in the 1800s. And uh, when 441 really wasn't 441 and uh, there was no asphalt or pavement, um, Penfield Hardware was a mainstay there for many years. And uh, Ron Baruti, who owns a number of other buildings, um, took that over and uh, has really done a lot uh, to re, um, redevelop the, the property and to make it a little bit more uh, appealing and curb appeal and uh, hopefully uh, very shortly, he'll have uh, both the first and second floor of that uh, uh, leased out. Advantage Credit Union uh, took over that uh, the area right across from uh, Family First. Uh, that sat empty. That bank sat empty for a lot of years and was a little bit of an eyesore. And uh, they've come in, and uh, I'm sure Family First uh, didn't mind looking at an empty uh, building. But uh, you know, competition is certainly good, and uh, they did a lot to, to clean that uh, whole area up. Uh, LaSalle's Landing is, uh, is another one of those jewels uh, within Penfield that uh, we've got a lot of commitment uh, to. And uh, if you think about uh, down in that area, when I came to Penfield in 75, uh, one of my uh, close to full-time job for a period of time was to, to go down and try to help get that area cleaned up, issue citations, um, issue stop work orders, uh, trying to get folks to do the right things. Uh, when I left, uh, Jim picked up that uh, picked up that torch and uh, carried that uh, through for the last uh, 30 plus years. And we've been very fortunate that we have picked up two pieces of property. We have put them together. One we went in, uh, which was known as the Ruoff property. We went in and cleaned all that up. We took out. Uh, a dumpster full of tires. Uh, we took out a couple of dumpsters full of metals. Uh, we took out an actual gas pump that was still cemented uh, in uh, that was pushed over into the water. Uh, we cleaned up a mercury spill and we cleaned up a petroleum spill and we brought it back uh, to an area and expanded it as part of our LaSalle's Landing Park. And uh, a lot of people, if you go down on the weekends, uh, canoe and kayak and uh, so that's one area uh, over the next several years that we're going to concentrate on uh, bringing some additional resources there uh, so that you may have uh, some public bathrooms, you may have an area for a uh, picnic, uh, picnic shelter and uh, some things like that. But we really wanted to start to get that cleaned up. And one of the things that I say to our staff on a regular basis, a lot of times uh, we would uh, identify a project and a project would be this big and uh, we'd say, okay, we've got enough money to do this, and then we're gonna get a little bit more money and do this. And what would happen over time is uh, you might have five, six, 10 years go by and uh, before something would either get started or get done. And one of the things that I said to staff is, is that a lot of this, a lot of this stuff is contagious. If you do a piece, uh, then it becomes contagious to do a little bit more. So we had uh, some cleanup that we needed to do in this area and we cleaned it up and all of a sudden the amount of people that started to come to this area just doubled and tripled and quadrupled. Um, and now we're starting to talk about uh, what can we do to put some more or additional amenities in there. But I really believe that uh, you gotta start and uh, then you just build on it because, uh, and you, you have to have your plans certainly, but you don't necessarily have to have all of your funding. Uh, start it and then start to build on it because a lot of times someone will come by and say, you know what, I like this area. What can we do to look for a grant? Uh, what can we do to uh, help that area uh, continue to grow and expand? I mentioned the, uh, the drainage uh, project in the Four Corners. So I won't spend a lot of time on that, but uh, that really did clean up that area and open that uh, area up. And that was one thing that we wanted to, to do. 
uh, interconnectability will be something else that, again, as time goes on, that, uh, that we want to take a look at. Um, we've, uh, we, we're starting to be known as uh, the, the, the strong of the East, um, and uh, there has been a number of uh, different medical facilities that have gone in, and uh, they, they have been great partners within the community. Uh, they bring a lot of resources for our residents so that they don't have to travel uh, maybe as far distance or go to the hospital to have some of these uh, services. And um, at the end of the day, typically around five, six o'clock, it becomes very quiet. Uh, so if they're adjacent to, to residential, you don't have a lot of noise and, and things. So they've been great partners. And so a lot of, a lot of work and a lot of activity by the uh, Strong Medical Complex. And one of the things that Strong is looking at is how do they become uh, more partnered with the community? Uh, can they work with the YMCA, for instance, to do some additional or, or more extensive rehab? And uh, so I know that there's a lot of things that are going on in, in that, uh, in that uh, particular location. I'm sorry. This is this is on uh, 250. So that's a great that's a great question. We all probably run 250. Um, so uh, it's it's in that area where Penfair Plaza is. Uh, Lillian's restaurants in the in there. But back behind that, uh, you've got a number of uh, different medical facilities. And if you go back often. Uh, Pembroke Drive, uh, you can get to that, uh, and a lot of times people don't even realize that uh, that it's there. And um, those uh, those office, a couple of uh, a couple of new office buildings have cropped up uh, there. One is a orthopedic, uh, what I'll call the uh, urgent care for orthopedic. So if you have a bad uh, orthopedic need. Uh, urgent care may, may ship you there or you may go there directly uh, to have them take a look at it and so they really focus more on the uh, ortho end of things and uh, versus uh, I've got a cut on my finger I've got the flu I'm not feeling well. Baytown has been a hot hot project uh, for probably five years and uh, when I came into uh, to office uh, that had been kicking around for a year plus and uh, what we've been attempting to do is to get our arms around what does that look like. Being very respectful of the neighborhoods, uh, being re very respectful of the other businesses, and uh, taking a look at what the community needs are and trying to work that together. So um, that finally got uh, a piece of uh, property got rezoned by the town board uh, here in December. Uh, they're looking to come into the, uh, to the planning board and uh, they're doing a complete facelift of that whole area. And then one of the things that uh, one of our board members said uh, to help brand that area, your sign that says uh, Baytown, uh, let's put in there uh, Baytown in Penfield. So that's one of the things that uh, we're going to help uh, try to uh, help rebrand that area a little bit more. And so this will give you an idea. <clears throat> this, this, is, this is existing today. This is the existing Walmart uh, today and uh, the buildings that are uh, here up front. This is the proposed uh, Walmart. Uh, this will be used or repurposed into other uh, businesses. Uh, we've heard things like, um, I always want to say Sibley's because, uh, because uh, that's what I, uh, my wife and daughters always talk about. Uh, uh, J.C. Penney's uh, has been one of the folks uh, that have talked about uh, this area. Um, and if they can give, get uh, one, one uh, tenant to go in there, that would I be ideal, but they uh, certainly are willing to uh, cut it up into a couple of uh, components. And then they're going to make a street of shops. So where the tops uh, was on this side, they're going to cut right through the center of that uh, and make two L-shaped buildings. And again, the idea is, is to have small shops, uh, small eateries and uh, things like that, so that when you go there, uh, you've got a uh, full-service uh, commercial area. So uh, what's going on in our, some of our more visible areas? So Jim will constantly say, Tony, we're, we're 94 to 95% occupied in our commercial uh, businesses. And that's a great thing. The problem is, is those handful that are not occupied seem to be the ones with the biggest uh, sore thumb that uh, stick out. So here, here is right on the corner of Atlantic Avenue and Route 250. This is uh, known as the former Gray property. Uh, again, back in the mid-70s, it was an uh, active uh, gasoline service station. 
Uh, that closed down in into the early 80s, and it's looked like that uh, since then. Now, the good news is uh, someone just bought this property. They've been in the process of uh, going through and uh, analyzing what the environmental contaminations are and looking to get that cleaned up. And, uh, their goal ultimately is is to remove that building. So that's one of our eyesores that uh, hopefully will soon go away. The, uh, the mobile station on Empire Boulevard that uh, sits uh, right there on uh, Bay and Empire Boulevard, uh, and it's kind of interesting, it's not that uh, folks don't have an interest in that property, uh, but there has been, and I know you will all find this uh, very hard to believe, there's been some family concerns. And uh, one side of the family wants to do something, the other side of the family wants to do something else. And so consequently, the business is dark. Uh, the businesses around it are frustrated. Uh, and uh, we, we uh, on a constant uh, basis, are out there having to ask them to get their lawn cut uh, to keep things updated. And if they don't do it, there's a process, but it's, a, it's just a very a laborious process, uh, but there's a process we'll go through and we'll do the work and then we charge it to their taxes. But ideally you'd like to get them uh, to do that because then we have to upfront our money and then in the ta next tax cycle it uh, comes back to us. Um, we have uh, uh, Atlantic or Browncroft uh, Boulevard, Creek Street uh, area. Uh, again, that mobile station. Uh, the good news is, is that uh, we were able to get the canopy down before it fell down. Um, this little trailer here is kind of the telltale. Uh, there is contaminated soil and they have been trying to remediate that for the last uh, four years or close to four years. And uh, no one wants to rent it, no one wants to buy it until they get that little certificate from the DEC that says it's uh, clean, clean property. The former Penfield Grill, uh, for those of you that uh, may have stopped in for dinner, I'm sure, but uh, uh, for, a, for a cool beverage, uh, that has uh, sat empty for many, many years. It was sold at auction, uh, and uh, the, the owner uh, just hasn't been able to uh, get the wherewithal to have uh, anything go in there of any value. And uh, we've been working with them. We've, we've cited them a number of times to clean things up. They've started to paint it, they got it half painted, they started to button things up, they got it half buttoned up, and that's an ongoing effort that, uh, that we have at that location. I know some of the, as, as the Four Corners area has started to develop, I know there's a lot more interest uh, in that uh, building to get that under uh, somebody's ownership to really get it fixed up and to make that a viable part of the Four Corners. The, uh, the former Kit Brothers site, uh, so uh, if you were to look at it, if I were if I were standing uh, in the driveway of 7-Eleven right here and looking across, that's that's what you saw at one point. If I were heading westbound, uh, you could see that uh, house, and and that house um, had a little bit of historic interest. I mean, not not to the degree that uh, some of our other properties, but as uh, the Historic Preservation Board took a look at it and others took a look at it. It, it had to be bulldozed because it was just in such a very, very bad shape. So that was taken down. This is uh, essentially what it looks like today. The grass is there now. And uh, the owner of the Dunkin' Donuts property in the building behind uh, has an interest in doing something on that uh, particular uh, piece of property. The classy chassis down in the panorama area. So each one of our business districts seems to have yeah, at least one of those sore thumbs that stick out. This is the former uh, Clean Town uh, uh, dry cleaners, uh, and you'll see a big pile of rubble. It's right next to the uh, ESL ATM. And uh, they took that down, uh, determined that there was more contamination than what they thought. They had to stop, and uh, they've been working with DEC. Uh, there is a plan uh, to redevelop that area, and uh, that has gone through the through the town planning process. Uh, and so they're ready to go once they, again, they get that slip from DEC to say that they have mitigated uh, the environmental concerns. And again, today that looks like a real uh, sore thumb. The hotel property, so if, you, if you're on Panorama Trail and you're looking at Popeyes, uh, right, to, right to the left of that, uh, there is a piece of property that they were looking to build a hotel. And they started to put the infrastructure in and then they stopped. And uh, about every six to eight months, Jim Costello would have call. We've got an interest. There will be a little flurry of activity for a week or two. It'll die off. I think Jim has been doing that now for 
um, seven, eight, nine years uh, anyway. So uh, we continue to look for and try to identify what might fit uh, in, that, uh, in that area. So let's talk a little bit about the, the future of Penfield and some of the things that are uh, going on and some of the projects that are before the, uh, the planning board today that uh, you might see uh, the, the, the landscape change a little bit uh, as we go through. So Mott's Lane, this has been a project that uh, we had some federal funding. So this is, this is uh, Signatures uh, right here, it's the Humphrey House, Signatures Humphrey House, Dr. DePietro's uh, facility here and the road comes back to the back of signatures and then the goal is to bring that around and uh, come out uh, up here and uh, so we we've gotten our approvals uh, to do that uh, we've been working with uh, Dr. DePietro to, uh, to try to bring that together uh, but again that's been uh, at least uh, three years uh, going on four years that we've been trying to do that and if you'll notice um, one of the things that we had to do, we took down the barn. So this is the barn that was at the Humphrey House. So that, uh, that is gone and we cleaned all of that uh, area up. And uh, again, the idea was get the barn down, start to get that cleaned up and, and start to work towards uh, getting Moss Lane uh, brought around. So that's, uh, that's still on the docket. Each year, Jim and I say we're gonna get that done uh, <laughs> this year. And each year uh, we continue to be uh, a little bit disappointed, uh, but we, but uh, we, got, um, we, got, we got a lot of energy and uh, we got a lot of grit and we're gonna, we're gonna get there. Will so. there be a light coming up on the that'll, be, that'll, be the next, uh, that'll be the next step and one of the things that we've talked about. The, the, the first thing that happens uh, with our friends with the state uh, that I've found is, is that you bring an idea to them and the first thing they, they say is no. <laughs> so what do, you, what do you have an interest in doing? And so then you talk a little bit about it and some time will go by and they'll say, well, maybe we'll be willing to take a look at that. Let's study it. Uh, and then a little bit more time will go by and we'll ask them again. And that, that's kind of how we got those turn arrows or working on the turn arrows in the four corners. 20, 20 plus years ago, we started, uh, let's, uh, let's get those turn arrows. 23 years, 24 years later, we're starting to get the turn arrows. So, uh, but ultimately that would be ideal uh, to be able to to have a light here that we might be able to get uh, some folks uh, in, in and out uh, easy. We talked about the rezoning of, uh, uh, on Penfield Road and on uh, Route 250. And uh, so uh, this, uh, this is the area that, uh, that we're looking at. And uh, we've already got an application that the town board just heard for Jeremiah's Tavern, for, for those of you that have been to Jeremiah's before. This will be their third location. They had the original one on Monroe Avenue, uh, one uh, at, uh, out in the Gates area, and they're proposing to do one here. Uh, the rezoning is uh, this grouping right here. So this is Harris Whalen Road. Uh, this is Harris Hill School. This is Harris Whalen Park in our lodge. And uh, this is an area that, uh, that uh, we have rezoned. There was some interest of doing a key bank in this area and uh, Key Bank elected uh, to uh, pull away from that uh, because they believe their market uh, was already uh, sufficiently covered. <coughs> this is the Manitou Lake District that we talked about as part of our mixed use. So as you can see, uh, there is a very large, uh, that 103 acre uh, pond, uh, lake. Um, uh, the fishermen will tell you that uh, they get some great fish out of that uh, because it's so deep, it's so cold, and um, so it's, uh, they're always sneaking in there, uh, trespassing uh, to do that, and the Dolomite uh, folks are trying to keep them uh, out of that area, but uh, they seem to get in and do some fishing. But again, uh, a mixture of some commercial and some residential uh, around that. Um, yes, sir? In terms of that lake, what type of recreational use could be, poss what possibilities are there for that? Well, you know, certainly the first thing that comes to mind is, is that uh, you can put in and do some, you know, canoeing and some kayaking and things like that. Um, there has been interest uh, similar to what you see down in Florida uh, where they put in those water skis, you know, so it's a mechanical device uh, that uh, pulls, uh, pulls the skiers around and uh, gives them a chance to ski. So. I, I, I think that it's probably safe to say that uh, sailing, kayaking, canoeing is what you, do, what you would probably likely see. 
no motorized boats, um, and I think that would be just more from a water quality standpoint. So the frontage won't be privately owned by the residential areas and the, and the commercial? Maybe. I, I think that that, uh, that remains to be seen as part of the discussion that we're going to have with the, uh, the mixed-use district. Again, uh, how does it fit with residential and commercial? Uh, is that a piece of property that's uh, owned independently? Is that a piece of property that uh, potentially you know, t the town has access to? All of those questions uh, are going to be unfolding over the next uh, nine months. I, I think it's going to be a very, both for this area and then for the next slide for the 250 Atlantic Avenue, I think it's got a lot of real potential in that area. I, I, would, I would like to, I'd really like to see it uh, with, a, with a nice water use concept uh, being part of that, um, you know, for that, for that area and, and for the town to have access to it. Can I just pop in Sure. Here? Just taking... Continuing on what Greg, I guess, was asking, uh, I think it's very interesting what you're doing uh, with this consultant. Could you just kind of retell us that? Maybe you told us that, but I missed it. But w this pre-planning, uh, really pre-planning, mm -hmm. what, what, what you're trying to do there and what, what are you hoping? Sure. So what Dick is referring to is, is that over the years, I think Penfield has done a very good job as we started to develop uh, going back to 1962 when we put our first code in place. Uh, the idea was is to plan for the future, so it wasn't just a hodgepodge, there was some true planning. And uh, so one of the things as a result of our 2010 comprehensive plan, we identified a number of areas for mixed use. And uh, we really identified those as some really specialized uh, areas. Uh, that uh, Atlantic and 250 area, a lot of open land. And so if you think about uh, that running from the current Y uh, all the way up to Atlantic Avenue and expending uh, past Atlantic Avenue. This property here, again, there's a lot of people in, that have lived here in Penfield for many, many years that uh, do not even know that this uh, exists back there. And so the thing we wanted to do is, is that because they were such um, uh, special areas, real jewels within the community, let's, uh, let's take that planning to that next level, to that next tier, and do it in a way that uh, there is that combination of residential and commercial, and uh, bring in a consultant uh, that specializes in that. So we, uh, we went out for a, for a request for a proposal. Uh, we brought in a number of different and, and all very well qualified. We, we settled on this particular um, uh, consultant. Uh, he is, uh, they, are, they are out of the Georgia area and have done uh, mixed use projects uh, throughout the US. And so they're really bringing a lot of experience uh, to this uh, project. And uh, it's a fairly small project uh, for them for some of the things that they've done. Uh, but they were, they were so intrigued by these unique land land areas, these land masses that we had here and then that we had at uh, Atlantic and 250. So we're really looking forward to, uh, we've got a clean slate. Uh, we're going to go through and uh, we've got uh, a nice cross section of folks, uh, town employees, town residents, um, a number of engineers and consultants that uh, we've pulled together. So uh, I, I look forward to maybe next year's uh, round of DEER program to uh, talk in more detail what this ultimately looks like uh, for these uh, mixed-use districts. Yeah, they're in the business. So the question was, uh, you know, who owns that? Uh, the former Odenbach family, Dolomite. Uh, now it's a, it's a European uh, old castle. Thank you, Jim. Uh, and they're in the business to mine. They want to they wanna dig dirt and sell dirt. They want to dig stone and crush it and sell, sell, sell crushed stone. They want to sell asphalt. Once, they've, once they completed the mining of this area, it becomes just land to them. And they're not in the business of develop, developing land. So they've got it on the market. One of the things I think they're, they're struggling with is what is, the, what is the value? When you've got a 103-acre parcel or 103-acre uh, lake there, what is that? Well, if you go down to Canandaigua Lake, uh, you go down to Honeyoy Lake, you know, they've got some, some real details about uh, what the cost is per lineal front, frontage of water. Um, now you're talking about is this, uh, is this commercial, is this residential, is this mixed use? How is that and, and then how do you value that? Uh, so I know they've been working with um, the realtors and uh, trying to get a sense of what that uh, property is worth to a developer uh, who's got a vision of uh, whatever this ends up being commercial and residential, 
Uh, my guess is, is that uh, their value is up here. They want to get it. They want to get it down here, but they can see their return being up here. And I think that uh, Old Castle is uh, trying to get what the land is valued. So they've been, they've been struggling with that a little bit. Is there a sewage? Is that by your panorama play? I don't know, you know, panorama play. So, so if you go up, you know where the new bridge, they just put the new bridge in? So for a while we had that detour around. So as you were going around that old Penfield Road and looked off to your right, that's where that is. <coughs> Be down uh, Panorama Trail, actually Panorama Trail is uh, up, yeah, up in this, uh, up in this area right here. Is it Lake area served by sewer lines? There, there are, there is access to sewers uh, down there. I mean, they would have to certainly expand and uh, grow that, but uh, any, any development that would take place in this area would require would require sanitary sewers. Yes? Is it terrain really steep? Uh, from the panorama side, uh, there are areas that are very steep, yes. So uh, the, the, uh, the, usable, the usable area or developable area is considerably less than the overall acreage. So certainly you're not gonna, you're not gonna develop um, you know, in the pond area itself. And uh, there are a couple of areas that have uh, some flat uh, topography, uh, but there's a lot of a lot of areas that uh, do have the slopes. So there's going to be uh, a lot of that property that will be, in fact, off limits to development. Where's the shooting place? The noise from the, the shooting place is uh, right about yeah, right about here. <laughs> Here's the Genesee Conservation League. So. And again, we, we, we talked about uh, 250 and, uh, and 286. So this is, the, this is the town hall complex right here. Uh, this was that gray property, that boarded up uh, garage that was there. But as we take a look at this area, uh, we've identified this area as an area that uh, we want to take a look at uh, for the mixed use uh, in that area. Uh, starting around the Y and then working working your way up to uh, this area here. People who bought the great property um, and they're going to knock that building up, they must have some idea what they want to do with it. They did just buy it to knock the building down. Well, wow. right. He, he is looking to develop some type of a commercial district there on that site. We hooked him up with the people that are looking at the rest of the property behind him to blend everything into one, you know, one development, and he's doing that now. But nothing specific. Nothing but nothing specific, yep. They're, they're all waiting for this plan that Tony's talking about to be completed before we'll allow anybody to go in and start building. So it's pure speculation on the part at this point. Well, they, they have a plan. They know what they yeah. want to do. The question is, is their plan matching our plan? Right. And that's what we're trying to get to. We don't have a plan yet to match, so until we do that. So, so in some regards, Greg, you know, it was speculation on, on their part uh, because uh, if they came in for a building permit uh, or to do something here today, we would say that uh, you got about a nine month wait uh, because uh, we're, we're trying to figure out what this area looks like, the uses, how it all fits together. And uh, so to a certain degree, the person bought, if it were me, I would not have bought the property uh, until I knew what I could or could not do. Um, that, but that's just, that's just me. Yeah, can I just pop in again? Sure. I think. Uh, from a resident standpoint, and I'm sure from a, a planning standpoint, you guys could be pretty excited about the fact that you have this, these two projects, mixed use, uh, and you're really doing some pre-planning, and you're going to be hopefully ready right. when the owner or the new owners come in and uh, want to do something, and uh, it, it's got to be a much better way of doing Town planning. A a absolutely, absolutely. Because you could really get a you could really get a scattergun uh, approach of different thoughts, ideas, and uses. And our goal is to truly have a plan, a plan that that uh, works with what's there today, a plan that uh, will serve the community over the long haul, and something that's done with some planning in mind, and not just uh, you know haphazard as uh, as we go through. Does Elms Creek feed into that lake? Does that lake? It's back there. Yeah, Allen's Creek, Allen's Creek does ultimately, uh, they merge uh, together 
um, uh, around uh, where what we knew as uh, Cybron algae, now uh, thermal fissure. Uh, it comes, so Allen Creek uh, comes together and into a Rondequoit Creek and then, and then uh, continues on to the bay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tony, the, the replacement for, um, for Crummers, is that identified? Ah, great, uh, great point, yes. You might be a, you might be a perfect uh, straight man for me and uh, <laughs> didn't even know it. So let's, because uh, I think we're at uh, maybe the slide after this, and then we'll uh, okay. come back. Ah, there we go. So we can always go back. So Crummers uh, closed down, and uh, they've gone in. It was uh, sold. Uh, the owners of the cottage, uh, Menden Cottage Hotel, uh, purchased this. They're going to call it uh, the Poor House uh, in Penfield. Uh, they have gone through and done a tremendous amount of uh, remodeling. Uh, they're looking to open over the next uh, uh, month or less. Uh, and uh, so it'll be similar to what we, we saw, at the, or what if you've ever been to the Cottage Hotel, a uh, similar type of fair. Um, and uh, it'll be nice to see, and they've done a lot of work to clean up, do a lot of remodeling. Uh, I, <coughs> excuse me, I must admit, I've never been into the ladies' room uh, at Crummer's, uh, but as my daughters tell me, that if you had to go, uh, you had to back in uh, because you could not walk in and turn or maneuver, you had to back in. So apparently they, they are doing a tremendous amount of, uh, of rework and remodeling and cleaning up. And uh, so uh, they've, uh, they've got experience in the business and uh, they, uh, they come with a lot of uh, high marks uh, from a lot of folks uh, in the Menden area. Uh, South Cove Apartments on Empire Boulevard. So uh, Basil's uh, is kind of the, the benchmark. If you take a look at uh, where Basil's Restaurant, you have all of that vacant land. So if you're looking at Basil's, uh, to the right of Basils, uh, that all that open land, they're proposing to put in uh, South Point Cove apartments. And uh, these are high-end apartments. Uh, they do have at least one building that will be for sale units. The rest will be uh, rentals. And uh, they're looking to get underway as early as uh, this year to start to do some, some site work and uh, with the idea that I'm guessing occupancy uh, maybe in 2014. What's the rent range? Uh, the rent range uh, was 12 to uh, 18. 12 to 18, yeah, depending upon one, one bedroom, two bedroom, or three bedroom. Kind of middle of the road. Yeah, about middle of the road. What do you do with access to Empire at that point? You need a light. You need a lot of basils already. Yeah, actually, uh, actually, the state, uh, the state has got. Uh, a plan, um, and uh, they'll be spending about a million dollars uh, reworking that uh, that whole area. They're going to be putting in turning lanes. They're going to be putting in a. They're going to be putting in a lane, what they call a safe lane, so that if I'm going down or coming up uh, Empire Boulevard, uh, I can get into the center lane, and that'll be that safe lane before I turn, and I don't have to worry about somebody coming up and uh, rear-ending me. So they've got about a million dollars worth of uh, just off-site, not on-site, but off-site uh, work that has to be done. They actually did apply for a, a light there and the, right. the state DOT rejected their request. For, for now anyways, yes. What's the, the timing, what's the timing on, what, where are we, what's the next? For, for that, for that uh, you'll see some site work uh, in 2013, uh, potential occupancy 2014, Dick. This is a medical complex uh, for those of you that were familiar with Ellen Berry on Empire Boulevard, uh, the Empire Weekly Post, uh, right next to the Empire Bar and Grill. Um, the developer is looking to take that, this over and redevelop this and to rehab those uh, facilities and turn it into a, a medical facility. And Jim, remind me what uh, the medical dialysis. dialysis. Thank you. Thank you. They're doing. Uh, it'll be a dialysis center that uh, that they'll have in that location. Okay, we'll right through the poorhouse, uh, the Shaw property. This is on Penfield Road, at uh, San <coughs> excuse me at Sanders Farm. So if you're heading. Heading east, uh, Wegmans is up here on your right-hand side. You have Sanders Farm here. Uh, this has been a vacant uh, area here. They're looking to put a uh, building right adjacent to the existing building. Father owns and operates here. Son will own and operate uh, that uh, legal and accounting. 
State Farm Office, uh, Hawkins Liquor Store, for those of you that may have uh, uh, stopped in there uh, once or twice uh, to <laughs> say hi to Jack Hawkins, probably not to purchase any alcoholic beverages. Uh, but the Hawkins uh, Liquor Store, this is now, uh, as you'll see, uh, done, done some remodeling, uh, raised the roof. Uh, they've got a couple of apartments up here, and um, the, uh, the, the, the building is almost complete. Uh, Paul Thompson and his wife, who actually owns State Farm Insurance, uh, the local office, uh, is moving in. She was next to Rosie's uh, uh, on Five Mile Line Road, and uh, Jim will be talking here very shortly, if he hasn't already, uh, with Rosie, who's looking to expand her, her restaurant uh, to have a little bit more uh, seating ability. Jeremiah's Tavern, as we, as we spoke, this is uh, going into Target. This is going into Doodlebugs and uh, Jeremiah's Tavern uh, looking to locate uh, in this area right here. How big of a, is that a pretty good sized building? About a 62, 6300 square foot uh, facility, Dick. Nice outdoor dining area. Uh, tell me, what's going in the Oscars, what used to be Oscars? Uh, nothing right now. That's the one that uh, we're trying to get uh, the old Penfield Tavern or the Oscars, uh, trying to get that, uh, trying to identify something that's there, will fit with parking and, and be a good use. Park, parking is a problem, as you know. Yeah, absolutely. 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 I'm almost wrapping up so I can get everybody out and uh, on schedule. So, okay, we'll hit uh, just a couple more. Tim Hortons, for those of you that you like, you know, Tim Hortons um, by, the, by the spa at La Bella. Uh, there is the uh, Lou building. Uh, they're looking to take that engineering building down and put in a Tim Hortons there. So we've been working with them on that. Um, Ellison Heights, uh, and, and so again, this is, this is in the area that, uh, where we had the new bridge uh, going up uh, into Brighton and the, and the detour around. Uh, there's a piece of property right in there, and they're looking to, uh, to develop uh, that uh, again uh, with a townhome, a townhome con concept. Is it up on the hill? Yeah, right up on that, right up on that uh, built into that. These are the existing townhouses that were put in. And then these are, these are some uh, townhomes that are uh, looking to put into that area. So I think we got two more slides and then uh, we'll take any questions. We'll stay as long as you want, uh, but we'll get uh, those of you that need to, to get on to other things. So what I talked about early on is uh, what is our focus from a town and from a town board and a town staff standpoint. One of my, one of my goals is, is that I need to make sure that we remain a uh, physically sound uh, community. Uh, we have the fourth lowest tax rate out of all the 19 towns, uh, uh, which, is, uh, which is a very positive thing. Um, two, towns, two towns that are lower than us uh, have landfills. Uh, one town is Henrietta and uh, has a lot of, has a lot of uh, commercial. Uh, and that's what's kept their, their so low. Uh, uh, at this point, uh, no talk of reassessment. Our numbers, our numbers are, are pretty stable. Uh, they're within the range uh, of what the state uh, looks for. The state uh, says if you get uh, below this number, you need to think about it. If you get above this number, we fall almost dead center right in there uh, at 100% uh, or just a hair over 100%. So there is no intent uh, to do anything at this point. So. I can't say what's going to happen in 2015 or 16, but uh, for now, uh, we, we take a look at that and then uh, balance that out as we need it. Healthcare costs is a big component. Uh, that thing uh, is, scares me uh, to no end. And uh, so as I put together the budget, even though we were significantly under budget, I set aside some extra dollars in the budget for this year because I just don't know where that's going to go. I don't know what the impacts are. When I sit across the table from MVP and Excellus, and we have our consultants, and I ask them, what, is it, uh, what does it hold for us? And the experts look at us and say, we haven't a clue. Uh, that makes me very nervous. So that's, that's a component that I have uh, held out a uh, little extra uh, dollars and cents for. Um, expanding our workforce development, uh, we, have, we have seen a lot of attrition. A lot of folks have uh, been able to, to leave, to retire. A couple went to uh, other jobs. And then one of the things that uh, I want to make sure that uh, we do is just not do an automatic one-for-one. 
I also have to make sure that I'm not uh, just burning our people out uh, and so we're doing some uh, workforce, more workforce development than I think we've, we've ever have uh, uh, for that. Using technology to reduce costs and improve our efficiency, that's a must. Uh, we have to stay current. I always tell the story when Ray Santa Rocco and I were on the town board, uh, Ray Santa Rocco, we proposed a $200 uh, or $250 fax machine and I thought, Ray, uh, you, you thought we were uh, selling Penfield. Uh, and uh, once, we, once we got it in, uh, Ray came back a few weeks later and said, boy, I missed that boat uh, totally. He says, I don't know how we did it. And now I take a look at uh, the devices we have, uh, our tablets, uh, our smartphones and everything. I, I just, I mean, I don't know how we, how we do it. I don't know where it's going to end. Uh, I just know that if I didn't have those devices uh, that I wouldn't be able to do the things uh, that I do. So technology really's gotta, really has to be our friend. Continue to provide the services that our residents uh, want uh, and manage our costs, that's really the key. Uh, so we've got the, the new families coming in that want everything. We've got our seniors that are on the other end that uh, want to manage their costs. So our goal is to manage the costs so that we provide that, uh, that balance. Uh, continue offering recreation programs that are valued and self-sustaining, that's, uh, that's really key. Uh, and uh, you know, we have to, to make sure that uh, those that are using the programs are paying for the programs and we have to work to make sure that uh, they're, they're affordable as uh, they can be. We'll be working on our mixed use district and uh, creating a good balance of residential and commercial opportunities. Um, it, it's a must uh, to have partnerships these days uh, with other municipalities. Uh, we, we shouldn't have to each buy a grader. Uh, one should buy a grader and we share it. Maybe one group buys a paver and then we share it. We have to do that uh, because uh, you can't have these pieces of equipment that are sitting and getting used for one month and then sitting for 11 months. So you want to you want to try to maximize that uh, as we go through. And we've been very successful on the east side with Parrington, Webster, Town of Pittsford, and Penfield have done a great job of trying to do that. And then to continue to partner with our school districts. When I leave here today, I'm heading to meet uh, with Dr. Uh, Grimm, uh, who is the new superintendent in Penfield, and his staff to talk about opportunities as to what we can do you know, to continue to partnership and do the right thing uh, within the community. Okay, I condensed it uh, maybe an hour and a half into an hour and 10 minutes. So uh, I'll take any questions. And, but more importantly, if there's some things that you would like to see more of um, you know, as we go through, I would love to do that. I didn't even get to any of my props, so yes. We, we have in, I guess going? Our rec center, there's three vans, and I would like to know what those vans do, because in the town of Pittsford and Webster, they do have vans that take senior citizens to doctors, uh, dentists, lawyers, whatever, and maybe charge a minimal charge of $2 or something like that. And why don't we have one here in Penfield? Well, we've, we've tried it two or three times. Um, and um, I, I could pull the I could pull the data and the stats out for you, uh, but we 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 had uh, six or seven uh, people that were using it. That was that was it, and it was costing us quite a bit of money. Um, and uh, so we've tried it over the years, and we just have not uh, we have not been able to uh, sustain that uh, sustain that model. Uh, but I'd be more than happy to show you the. Uh, the work that uh, Mike Cooper, Laura Cheney, um, and uh, Chris Bilo have done, and Lynn Ann Conroy uh, have done uh, on that. Um, so it, it has been a very high cost uh, for very few people that uh, have utilized the service. And it was for taking people to the doctors? Yep, we took, uh, we took people, in, in the breakdown we'll show you, uh, the people that we took to Wegmans or Tops, uh, the people we took to the doctor's offices or some other appointments. Um, and, and so I would be more than happy some Tuesday, you know, if you're, if you're here on, on some regular basis to bring that package over and to share that with you. And, and we said, I mean, to, to the staff's credit, the staff said that, uh, you know, from time to time we'll look at it, uh, but uh, we've got to We've got, to, we've got to have a business plan or a business case that uh, says that, you know, to run that service, uh, to have the vehicle, to have the, the, um, uh, the operator, uh, and to do it for a very small number of people uh, from an affordability standpoint, that, uh, that was a problem that we were having.
But we can take a look at that. I'd be more than happy to, uh, more than happy to share that with you. You know, I wanted to say, um, I could, um, one last thing, and that is, uh, would you tell the superintendent of schools in Penfield to listen to you about how you budget? Because I'm not quite sure they budget the way you budget. Well, this is what I'll say. We, I got your point. Uh, we have a new superintendent. I'm not sure. He, he is going to be just embarking on his first Penfield budget uh, here this spring. So um, I, I think you'll find at least uh, what little I know of him, uh, he brings a very practical approach. So, but I, I certainly will, will uh, continue to offer my thoughts. So a little piece of trivia, eight, eight, cents, eight cents for every dollar that you pay in taxes goes to the town of Penfield for us to operate the town. Uh, 20, 22 or 23 cents, depending upon if you're in Webster or Penfield, uh, go to the county. And the other 69 or 70 cents, again, uh, dependent upon Webster or Penfield, go to the school district. That's how, that's how the tax dollar uh, breaks out. Um, and I, in, in, fairness, in fairness to the school district, and, and I'll be the first to admit that uh, I, I agree that they're probably not as efficient as they could be. That's, that's Tony standing here looking, looking over across the, the water at them. And uh, one might say that uh, stick, to, stick to the town, you'll have your hands full, don't try to, don't try to uh, manage the school district. But I, I think there's some opportunities where they could help manage their costs. The other thing they're faced with is they're faced with so many state regulations and we can't lose sight of that. Um, I, have, I have really gotten off my, my soapbox um, about uh, the school district and the school district trying to manage their costs. Again, I think all of us have the opportunity to better contain our costs. The soapbox that I'm now on is uh, with our friends at the state to say, guys, you, you are just over-regulating us so much that uh, we, it's just so hard for us to, to make budget and for us uh, to uh, fulfill all the programs that you have. Uh, Penfield, for the third year, uh, has met our 2% tax cap. Um, and, and so I'm very proud of the fact that we've met our 2% our tax cap. Last year, the state uh, sent down 22% uh, cost for retirement down to us. They sent 12% uh, workers' compensation down, and they sent an average of uh, our, our other insurances over 10%. So if I'm trying to maintain on behalf of our community a 2% tax cap, and I'm getting 10, 12, 22% coming down on me, that's a, that's a problem. I, I'm, I'm going to hit a wall, whether it's next year or two years or three years from now, I'm going to hit a wall. So the bandwagon that I'm currently on is saying to, the, to our friends in the state uh, and anybody that will listen to me is, is that uh, you've got you've to cut some of your mandates. Uh, you guys have got to rein in spending. Um, the governor is, uh, to his credit, I'll give him some, some, some credit on some things he's trying to do, but when you're borrowing more than what you're cutting, that's not a sustainable model. Uh, we, we uh, by 2014, uh, unless uh, something changes, by 2014, we'll, within the state of New York, we'll have hit uh, our top of our taxable uh, ability in New York State. Uh, and so the next thing to do is, is to raise that. And nobody wants to see that raised. I'm, I'm saying cut cost, cut spending. Uh, combined duplication of efforts, um, and and I'm and I've off, I'm off my soapbox uh, for the schools because they're, they've got so much mandated to them, and their hands are so tied that uh, unless their hands are free, they're not going to go anywhere other than uh, their their costs are going to go up. In, in fairness to, in fairness to the schools, uh, there's a lot that's mandated that they don't have a say about, like 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 Maggie in the county. Maggie, Maggie has roughly, uh, if I remember my numbers when I was county legislator, Maggie has 80% of her budget that's dictated to her that she has to spend and this is how she has to spend it. The other 20% is, uh, is areas that she can control. Uh, but when, you have, when you're looking down the barrel of 80%, uh, 
uh, you don't have a lot of wiggle room uh, to cut uh, to cut costs. In fact, uh, to be honest with you, um, I, I'll make a I'll make a casual prediction. So this I don't have any inside information. This is just uh, this is just Tony. Uh, that spent uh, a lot of years at Kodak, and I've been involved with the town in a lot of different uh, position over the years. I'll make a casual prediction that in the next three to five years, that uh, if we don't do something at the state and federal level, most of the local communities will be bankrupt. Will be bankrupt. Uh, and and uh, nobody wants to see that uh, happen. Uh, if you look to the west and you look to Erie County, uh, they had problems and they had a control board come in and when you have a control board coming in It's like uh, you're going out. You're going out for a ride. You have no idea where you're going uh, when you're going to get back and uh, Whether you're going to like it or not um, and they come in and they just slash and burn and cut everything uh, They cut your public safety uh, they, they, they stop cutting grass in parks. They close parks down I mean all of those things that really make for a community kind of go by the wayside and they do the very basics and the very basics at best are very basic um, so they plow the road uh, but maybe not to the degree we see today uh, you get a you get a police officer and if it's a non-emergency maybe you phone in uh, what your report is so uh, we we really have a bigger issue uh, than local government and local schools our bigger issue um, is uh, our state and then our federal level, they just need to uh, cut cut up their credit card. I mean, we just can't keep racking up the charges uh, because uh, you know we can't we can't afford to pay for it. Uh, we got to get our hands around spending, and we got to reduce costs. I mean, that's uh, you know I'd love to be able to uh, go out and uh, buy a brand new car every year to get something new and shiny and everything like that, but. You know, I've got to manage. I've got to manage our our families, uh, our, our our dollars and our cents. And uh, maybe if we're lucky, every eight or nine or ten years, you get a new car. So, and and we're fortunate. We're probably fortunate we can do that. But, yes. I have a question for people that retire from Penfield Services. Um, they get their retirement, but then do they get an increase every year in their um, wages, like? Well, we don't even get it in Social Security anymore. But do they? Because I, it's I not, retired from some place after 35 years. Sure. And I'm still getting the same amount of money right. that I made the first year. Mm -hmm. No, no increases. What, what I'll say, what I'll say is, is that, uh, and 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 you can speak with Jim. When when I came into office uh, for the last for the last three years, I have frozen uh, all the elected officials and all the appointed officials' salaries. Um, I froze department head salaries, and last year, I think for the first time that I can ever recall in my, in my tenure uh, with the town, either as an employee, an appointed official, or an elected official, uh, no one in the town got an increase. Uh, and that, that created, obviously that created uh, a lot of stress. Um, and um, as we took, as the board took a look at it, uh, we, we had to make some hard decisions. Um, we uh, made hard decisions around health care. Uh, we had employees that uh, paid nothing for health care, depending upon when they started. And uh, over a three year period, uh, which will end uh, next year, 2014, everybody will contribute 25% uh, to their health care. Uh, and that, that was a difficult decision uh, for those people, and not to pick on Jim Costello, but, uh, <laughs> but Jim, uh, Jim Costello, um, you know, uh, being a 33, 34 year member of the community, and when he came in, at the time, health care costs uh, were covered 100%. And as we took a look at it, uh, we said we can't, we can't do that. That's not sustainable. That's not sustainable.